All right, folks, we're getting real close to time here. So I just wanted to chime in and let you guys know that we're going to start right at 1230. And hopefully if anybody has any questions, they'll use the Q&A. It's 1230 now. So let me start. I am Bill Murphy. Your computer says that I am Don Tiemann, and that's not true. I just use his account to log into this Zoom webinar. Welcome to our fourth in a series of webinars we've been doing on um, Wednesdays, and it's been a fantastic way to stay in touch with you, friends. And I'm just excited that we've got so much momentum going because so many of you have not yet returned to your offices, or even if you have, it's a great way for you to stay current with what we've done. Even if some of these solutions are ones that you've seen before, it's good to get updated pictures of projects and to hear some of the things we've learned because we continue to improve. That's part of that Kaizen training is that we're always improving. So I'm going to start this presentation. I, we have it recording now, so any of your friends or peers that couldn't join us, let them know about it. We'll provide a link at the end uh, when we give you the other information that'll come in the next day or two, including a link to the video for this. I'm joined by Ron Gator, and I'll introduce him here in a minute. Uh, Ron will be our guest speaker. So let me change that sound. See if I can do that. There we go. And one of the things I want to make sure you understand is that we're we've gotten a lot more comfortable with Zoom, and a lot of our speakers this is their first time using it in a live webinar like this. So we're pretty excited as we continue to share knowledge and grow our abilities. Um, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is trying to stay ahead of technology, and that is to keep things current for you folks. So again, I'm Bill Murphy for. ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply Company, and Bowman Construction Supply. Most of you that are already on here already know us very well. And there's a little map there that shows the eight states that we're actively involved in. We actually have a network that spans the, the country and the continent. And we have friends from around the globe that are either manufacturers or they do what we do. And it's been really fun growing those relationships over the years. Our company's actually been in business for over 50 years. Um, ASP Enterprises was bought more than 10 years ago by the uh, folks that own Quick Supply Company. And a few years ago, we added Bowman Construction Supply to our fold because all three companies have a lot of overlap. We all provide uh, construction materials and we support the civil design community. We have eight offices and you can see those listed there on the screen. A number of our sales team are CPES certified and we have one civil engineer, PE, that's me on staff that supports all three of those companies and all of our sales staff. And so with all of that, we have this tremendous infrastructure to help you specify with confidence. And we have over 9,000 customers. This slide should be updated. And over the last few years, we've done a great job of linking all three of these companies together to share our power. And when I say power, I mean some tremendous warehouses with large inventories. Some of our offices are blessed with some big, impressive showrooms. The one in the top center picture of this slide is actually our ASP KC location down near Swope Park and KC Mobile Water Services. It's a beautiful facility. Check it out. Uh, I'm sitting in a warehouse at Quick Supply Company in Des Moines, Iowa, where we have a new outdoor display. It's not shown on these pictures, but it's similar to the one in the top right, plus a lot more of our outdoor living products. We have some hardscape specialists in our company. Uh, you're familiar with our big trucks that are showing up on sites with a lot of rolled goods and commodities. We also specialize in engineered products and solutions. And we have a fleet of uh, the smaller straight trucks so we can get to any corner of our uh, markets in a short order with your inventory and we can be there quick and not hold you up. And we even offer a lot of times advice on site to make sure you're building it and installing it right. Again, uh, tremendous inventory and we are, experts at logistics. I say we, and that's lumping me in and I'm not one of them, but we have people who are very, very good at um, moving things around and getting the right product in the right place at the right time. I'm proud of us. I get involved with our engineered products. Um, a lot of our stormwater solutions, but we have even more than that. And we let uh, some of these solutions overlap into different categories. Some of these solutions work for erosion control, but they're also part of our low impact development and green infrastructure package. And that is Mr. Ron Gator. Ron Gator is representing Moats Enterprises and you know the product as Fleximat and we're very proud of it. It's done very well for us. I'm gonna introduce Ron and then hand the controls over to him. And Ron, uh, as part of that, I'm gonna set, set the remote control and I'm gonna give you the controls, but don't flip the screen yet. I'm gonna do a little bio. Ron joined Moats in 2016 as a regional manager for the Midwest. He covers all of our states plus more 13 state territory 
and he promotes their permanent vegetated hard armor mats. And he spends his time doing presentations with civil engineers. He works closely with DOTs and he goes to job sites to provide technical assistance for installs. Our, my job and Ron's jobs are very similar. Uh, Ron is the flex mat expert, whereas I have to know a whole lot of our different solutions. Uh, Ron's career in the erosion control industry started with several years with American Excelsior. He gained experience from being involved with the erosion control industry, and he grew a lot in his knowledge of the specification work and how important it is for the designer up front to make sure they have good specs to protect themselves, protect the integrity of their product project, and working with contractors on making sure they understand the difference between the different solutions. Uh, one of the neat things that he'll get into during, I'll, I'll wait, he'll get into it during his presentation about where FlexMat fits in the erosion control industry. Ron is a University of Iowa grad, and as a cyclone, I don't hold that against him, uh, partly because it wouldn't be good for my health. He went for a full ride scholarship to the University of Iowa, played football for the Hawkeyes. He was named first team all Big Ten his senior year, and then he was drafted into the NFL by a team that I won't mention because I'm a Chiefs fan. I'll let Ron mention it. And Ron, let's make sure you are unmuted. Can you say hello to everybody? And can you take the controls? You're controlling Ron, but I don't see you as unmuted. Let's see what I can do about that. You look unmuted on my side. Looks like you're running it. And we are not hearing you yet. Let's go to check on you. I hope they can't see what I'm doing on my screen. It looks like you're still muted. Let's try one more time, one more thing. How about that, Ron? Can you hear me? I think so. Can, let's try to turn it up, folks. Can can you hear him? Nod yes. Yep, they can hear you. <laughs> okay. So one of the things I didn't mention, Ron, is they're going to use Q&A throughout this to communicate with us, not sure. chat. So as they use the Q&A, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to click back to you, Ron, and I'm going to do from current slide, and I'm going to give you the controls back. They'll use Q&A, and I'll be able to check those while you're presenting. Okay. So try, try to hit, the, hit tap on the screen and then go ahead and take control again, would you? Thanks. Okay. Should be able to see your see the screen move. Let yep. me do one more thing here, Ron. All right. And folks, this is on me. This isn't on Ron. I'm <laughs> trying some tricks with the music, and I think when I was playing music earlier, uh, I, I messed a few things up because that's what I do. Again, this is Bill Murphy, not Don Teeman. But every time I mess up, I'm going to say I'm Don Teeman. There you go, Ron. It's yours. You might have to click in there one more time, and you're driving. Okay. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Um, so I've got a lot of pictures. Um, in the presentation, so I'm going to go fairly quick so we can get finished on time. Um, I just believe it's uh, the best way to tell the stories to show the, the beginning, middle, and end. So what is Fleximat? It's a 5,000 PSI concrete. It's got a high-string polypropylene geogrid embedded in the concrete with either one or two erosion control blankets underneath it. Uh, you can see the block are six and a half by six and a half inches. Uh, the height is low profile, two and a quarter inches with a one and a half inch uh, gap between the block, which represents a 30% opening for vegetation to grow up through the block. The pyramid shape is what allows us to roll it up into a nice tight roll. And the picture on the bottom is a truckload of Fleximat. We can get 4,800 square feet on a truck, or that's 48,000 pounds. Product weighs 10 pounds per square foot. So we offer three different underlayments. The one on the top is Fleximat standard. It's got Curl X200 underneath it. The one on the far right is Fleximat Plus. It's got Curl X2 in conjunction with Recyclex. And the one on the bottom is we do offer a 10 ounce non-woven. Um, really the only time that I've used the non-woven is um, bridge abutment or um, access road. Anywhere you're not, you don't think you're gonna get vegetation, you'll go with the non-woven. 99% of the time it's either gonna be standard or plus. We do offer a flame resistant grid and that's all okay so about four years ago we did a job with the city of Lenexa you can see that's a um, floodplain uh, area there and so the reason oops uh, the reason they went with the flame resistant grid is because that whole area floods out about five times a year and they wanted to plant a native seed, and that's why I, I keep going out to this job waiting to see a controlled burn. Uh, they haven't done it yet. Um, so you can see that's what it looked like uh, shortly after install. 
Uh, I went back probably, I don't know, six, six months later. You can see most of the block are, are filled in. And then I went back a year later and you can see uh, maybe down at the bottom a few block. But for the most part, that's what you're going to see and get with the product is it all vegetated in. You won't even know the concrete block are there. So the hydraulic testing, um, we did it uh, at TRI Environmental in South Carolina. That's a 30% slope on a sandy loam soil. What they do is they run water uh, over the, in the flume for hours and hours and hours trying to get a half inch of soil loss. And uh, you can see the numbers, they both have a, a plus sign behind them. That's because they couldn't get the product to fail. The shear stress is 24 pounds per square foot. That, that slide here says 19. Uh, feet per second. Uh, a couple years ago, the Texas DOT wanted us to test the product on a 20% slope. What that did is it took the velocity from 19 to 30 feet per second. So essentially all we're pointing out is the, the product can take on a ton of water. And on here you can see um, the different shear stresses of TRMs and riprap and either vegetated or unvegetated. Um, you can see uh, by the bar, you know, we're three, four, five times the value of a lot of these products. But the real key thing to look at is we're unvegetated. So uh, the second you put the product down, it, it's working. Um, you can see right next to it, the TRM vegetated. So, you know, when I get in front of civil engineers and I give this presentation, I ask them a lot, you know, do you ever specify a TRM in the bottom of a channel? Well, of course you do. Um, the only problem with that is, you know, if, if, if it's installed at the wrong time, you know, the contractor may go out there, put it in the bottom of the channel and, you know, doesn't realize in five to seven days, there's going to be a three or four inch rain event. The blanket has not had time to vegetate and grow through it. So it's really unstable and most likely it'll get wiped out of there. Bill? Okay. Yes. Um, were you, yeah. So, this is the point, uh, the other thing on this slide. If we oh, had I was going to wait and do it at the end. I was going to, I was going to try to catch you at the end, but yeah, this, I was going to ask you about the shear stress and the difference between TRMs and ACBs. And yeah, where so, the fits. yeah. So if we had another bar, we would put a, a articulated concrete block to the right of the Fleximat bar. And really before Fleximat came along, all you had was a TRM and then you had to jump all the way to an ACB. And there's a, a huge price difference between both of those products. So um, it's really nice that Fleximat fits nicely in, be, in between the TRM and the ACB because the price point um, is very competitive. Uh, it doesn't, you know, with an ACB, you need a spreader bar, a crane. Uh, that really adds to the cost of their product. So, um, and we don't really play in the same field. You know, we're doing outlet pipes and shorelines and channels and slopes and, a lot of their uh, work they're doing, you know, dam emergency spillways, overflow areas that, you know, take on much more uh, uh, shear stress and water velocities than Fleximat. Excellent point. Thanks, Ron. So F Fleximat is packaged. You can see the top picture. Some rolls have two straps, some have three. Uh, it's more for the contractor to understand. It's just important that they strap to each individual strap. If they try to run a... Um, hook it to the bucket and run it through the straps and back up. The product weighs so much that it'll actually cut the, the strap in half and now they can't pick it up and move it around. And Ron, I clicked on the Q&A so it may have taken away control. You may need to click in that screen again to keep advancing. Oh, you're right. I did that. No worries. Just trying to get used to the slow. Okay, so, oops, <laughs> there it goes. So Fleximat, you can see, comes in multiple widths. Standard lengths are 30, 40, 50, but we can customize. Um, the picture in the, the middle is a 10 by 62. Uh, the one on the right is a 16, I believe, by 22. So we don't have to hold anybody to a 30, 40, 50. We can do 22, 35, you know, whatever it is uh, to accommodate the job. Maintenance, so um, you might be able to tell I'm not a big fan of riprap. This is one of the reasons, you know, they say a pitcher says a thousand words. Uh, with my product, 
You don't need to worry about a mower throwing the rocks, weeds growing up through it. Um, if you want to mow over it, you can mow from one side to the other. It's just a much cleaner look than, you know, what you're looking at on the right. Performance life, we say 75 years. Um, we're actually right now um, just started using a new grid that the uh, UV hours are being increased as we keep testing. Um, but right now, the, the grid that we have on there now is somewhere around 22 to 23 years. But the whole key to it, the longevity is once the grass grows up through or you get natural sedimentation going over the block, that's why we say the product will last so long. So, you know, trucking, it's gone up. Um, you know, we like to point out if you had a 4,800 square foot area, uh, we would bring in one truck. If you did the same area with 18 inches of riprap, it would require 32 truck loads. So quite a bit of difference there in the freight charges and what we're doing to the economy with all the traffic. We do a lot of access or low water crossing areas. Um, you can see in the picture, uh, there's a channel on the right that comes down and goes across the mat. Uh, a lot of DNRs, NRCSs want to be able to drive their pickup from one side to the other. Um, and they can do that with flex mat. It's kind of hard to do with the riprap. And then on the photo on the right, you can see how it vegetates in and you got a nice uh, surface there for the trucks to dry over. The product is pretty flexible. Um, it's kind of hard to point out to you without being in a room with you, but there are points in this where when we're coming around a bend, we will have to cut the mat. Uh, it's just a contractor using a concrete saw blade to cut the concrete. Um, the only problem with this picture is, um, as you see in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, uh, we would never leave that area bare. Um, you can see on the other side of the mat, they had installed the sod. Uh, they just had not got to the other side yet, but we want sod, a blanket, something so water isn't getting underneath that leading edge and trying to reel out underneath the mat. Um, the other point is, let's say these mats are going down the slope. Uh, the way you pin the mat down is we, uh, you use an 18 inch U-shaped rebar anchor. On the width of the mat, the anchor goes every two feet and when two mats abut one another, they go every three feet down the longitudinal seam. So we work with a company called Gripple. They make a uh, cross plate anchor for us and you need, so now it's a little bit different. The, the cross plate is now coated uh, in the cable. It's all one system now. Uh, you need a drive bar, a gas powered driver and a jack jaw. And I used to say the only time you'd use this anchor is maybe if you're at the bottom of the channel like this picture indicates or like a one-to-one -one, um, slope to uh, be able to hold the mat down. So what you do is you um, put the drive bar uh, right in the center of four block, you uh, drive it down. Once you get it driven down and leave about a foot of the cable up, uh, that jack jaw, it's got a jaw down at the bottom, you grab a hold of the uh, cable. And when you push down on the anchor a couple times, the duck bill that went in skinny now flattens out and that's how we get our tension. And then once you got it down and nice and tight, you just take, uh, there's a picture of the jack jaw, the jaws on it. And then once you get it tightened to where you want it to be, you just take cable cutters and cut off the excess. So here's a job that's not at the bottom of a channel or a one-to-one. -one. This is a job I did outside of Chicago three years ago. Uh, you can see they, they had no worries about using a lot of riprap above the outlet structure, but um, I got out there, was uh, just taking some pictures. It's kind of what it looked like beforehand. Then uh, we put in the two mats. Um, the only problem, and you know, I, I, I'm not trying to be negative. I just like to point things out. So when you're designing, you know, you're, you can do it the right way. Uh, and we always, uh, for the most part, do a mat layout and, and explain to the contractor how to put the mats in. But as you can see on this picture, um, he actually installed it the wrong way. He put the, the seam right down, right where the water comes out of the outlet. So the, the only point of this photo is to show that the guy should have switched mats and reversed them and kind of got that seam off to the side. But on this one, you know, the manufacturer's recommendation is when you put a cross plate anchor in 
as you can see in the photo, they go uh, every three feet in a diamond pattern. So here's another one, not a one-to-one -one or the bottom of a channel. Uh, this job was just shy of 11,000 square feet. They ended up putting in 1,200 cross-plate anchors, which is a lot for a job. Um, this uh, job had the GeoWeb product filled with concrete before. They had a couple failures, so they said, hey, let's, you know, give uh, Fleximat a shot. Um, so we put it in about uh, two years ago. Uh, the only problem I don't like about this install is you can see in the middle of the mat, uh, they had actually poured concrete uh, over the mat. Um, the reason I get it, that's kind of where the problem area is, where the water's coming down and hitting that side slope. Uh, but the problem with the concrete is um, it creates a nice flat surface for the water to run even faster. And now I can't get vegetation to grow up through the mat. We go around trees. I'll show you how we go around that outlet. We do boat ramps. You know, a lot of DOTs like to use riprap off the side of the road for check dams. Uh, we take away any concerns. Now you've got a nice clean mobile surface. If the car goes off the road, it isn't gonna do anything to the mat. And it's a much cleaner look. Here's one, we went all the way down, pretty good stretch going all the way down to the bottom of the hill with flex mat. You know, uh, you put rock in there, you're gonna get, you know, a lot of weeds growing up. It's just, once again, if a car goes off the side of the road, no worries. Here's one we did with ASP. This is, uh, I believe, off of 63 over by Columbia, Missouri. Um, one thing I do want to point out, um, when they originally did the install, um, they didn't realize that the road had no uh, curb in there. And so that's why you can see the curb stops there. When they initially put the mat in, it, um, it, the water got underneath the leading edge and it kind of created a problem there. So they um, had to fix and put the flex mat in the bottom of the channel and then kind of line it with some uh, grouted riprap. But man, I mean, you just uh, take, a, take a look at the bottom of the channel and it's just uh, swamped, you know, huge vegetation of grass growing in there now to slow the water down. Here's a truckload, uh, just showing 12 eight by fifties that we can get on a flatbed. Here's the proper way to pick up the roll. You know, you can kind of do it that way, reverse go through the bucket or just hook onto each uh, strap individually. So installation, uh, pretty simple. Prepare your subgrade, get your big rocks and chunks of dirt out of there. Lay down your seed and then lay down your mat. So here's uh, the first video. So here you can see we've got a 50,000 pound excavator on a mat with a mat in the air getting ready to knock the mat down the slope. Uh, it, it takes all of about seven seconds for that install to go in for them. Very, very simple. If you had to grade that out and put down a liner and try to get rip wrap to hold in there, it would take you a lot longer than what you just looked at. So that's a pretty simple one. You know, gravity took over. This one's a little more realistic, you know. This one, we're going to get a little bit of audio. This is an 8x50. It's on I-69. It's between two roads. And uh, it took this guy all about four and a half minutes to unroll. So I'm going to let it go a little bit. Um, I don't know exactly why this guy asked him to pull the mat over. Uh, once I kind of walk around the guy, you'll see. Uh, all the contractor has to do is put the bucket in the roll block and just drag the mat over and you want to move it. Never pick it up or tear the grid. It's a pretty simple to pull it either sideways or lengthwise when you put the bucket in between the block. So this is it. We'll go a little bit longer. So here he goes. He's getting ready to put it in between the block. So there's all kinds of, you just saw that guy had a, a bucket on there. Some people will weld a, a flat steel plate on there. And the reason that's on there is for when they go to dig out at a 45 degree angle on the shoreline, 
It's just easier to do with that piece of iron on there instead of the bucket or a claw. So we're always going to want on a leading edge or an install like this, it's always going to be trenched in 18 inches. Here's rigging straps and, you know, another piece of equipment that they can use to pick up the rolls with the straps. So here you can see the rigging chains. They got them on the forklifts and now they're just hooking it on either two or three straps depending on the width of the roll. Here's those rebar anchors that I talked about. That's what's gonna anchor it down. And so on this job, we did about almost 200,000 square feet of uh, shoreline, or I mean, slope protection. Down below is the Ohio River. Uh, so what we did is these are a bunch of 16 by 50s going down. Um, you can see where the seam is, where that seam is, is where we um, required them to put the cross fade anchors in. And then on the longitudinal seams is where they are putting the rebar anchors in. Here's a box of what the, re the cross plate anchors look like. So once again, you can see the diamond pattern every three feet. You never want to put that cross plate right directly in the seam of the two mats. It will do nothing for you. Come on, slide. So uh, one thing I haven't discussed is we um, offer a, a two and a half foot wide by 90 foot roll of Recyclex. Um, that is used whenever two mats abut one another. So the only purpose of that blanket is to keep the seam from reeling out and to also keep the seat in place. So what they would do is they would roll that mat down, peel it back, roll out the blanket, and now when they get ready to roll the next one uh, right next to it, it's all covered up and we're good to go. So here uh, we've got uh, American Excelsior's erosion control lab. Uh, back in 2010, they had 40 ton of rock in that uh, bottom of the channel. They tore it out. Um, they normally don't let the vegetation get quite that tall, but they just wanted to be able to show everybody that, you know, the product, you can mow over it. And I'm not sure if I have to click this, Bill. Yep. Video that's not a video that I had loaded separately wrong. Yep, that's so. all right. And so here it is. Um, 71 days later, you got vegetation growing through the whole thing. It's locked in. It's going nowhere. And then um, I happened to be out there a couple years ago. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I had closed the Q&A. You'll have to click on the screen one more time and take it back. It does that. It overrides for some reason. You're doing great. It's one o'clock and you're doing great. Oh, Okay. So there it is, um, like seven years after the install, all nicely vegetated. You don't even know the blocker there doing exactly what we wanted to do, and it looks a lot better than the rip route. So I'm gonna try to go through this really quick. I'm gonna just show you a bunch of different ways to use the product. Channel design, trench in the leading edge, 18 inches. If you have more than one mat going, roll out the first one, peel it back, dig out three inches, lay your next mat, and all we're doing is a shingle effect. So here's a channel 750 feet long, one and a half to one side slopes. We put 16 by 30s in the bottom and 16 by 22s on the side slope. Uh, the only thing I didn't understand is why they didn't dewater the bottom of the channel. Come on. Okay. So we started there, down at that end where the two outlet pipes are. You can see between the pipes, we can't get into every nook and cranny. I'll show you how we fix that. After I took this picture, the guy put his bucket on the, the roll there, the mat, and pulled it around as far as he could so that we could cut it and then line up the next mat. And then here they are going down, really sloppy install with all that water in there. Moving along, just, uh, it was my first install, and then bam, two days later, job is installed. One thing I like to point out on this, you can do this one of two ways. If you look at the top of the slope on the right, you can see they started the mat four or five feet past the top of the slope, or as you can see on the other side of the slope, they trench it in. So if you don't have four to five feet to run past the top of the slope, trench it in and you'll be set. 
And then what did we do with the areas where we couldn't get the mat in between the pipe and where we cut it? We just put concrete over it. And there's another view of it. So here's one, we put 16 by 50s in the bottom and five and a half by 50s uh, above it. Um, uh, the only thing here is there was about eight foot on the bottom and four foot going up the side slopes with the 16 foot mat. Um, if you look, it's, you got to really look, but the contractor, I wish he would have kind of pulled the mat out a little bit better um, to get them spaced out. But even though he didn't, as you can see by this photo, uh, we still had a, a really good amount of vegetation coming through the block. Here's one in Lawrence. Uh, we did this one about three years ago. Um, you can see all the blanket above the Fleximat. Hey, and then here it is. I went back, I don't know, five or six months later. Ron, this picture looks so much different than the project before. The other one before was really well vegetated. What happened, do you think, on that left slope? Correct. So um, what, what, what I want to say about the install, this is a perfect example. Um, I, I, I try not to throw contractors under the bus because, you know, I want to work with them. But you can obviously see on this job where they did a really great job seeding 60 to 70% of it. And then that whole side slope where you have nothing growing in, it, it just appears to me like they, they didn't see it at all. So, and unfortunately I've gone back to this job and they have gotten some pretty uh, major reels going down that side now. Inlet outlet. Uh, so, you know, we, we do a lot of outlets. You can see what happens when you use riprap. It'll start scouring out from the edge. We tore that out, put in Fleximat. Now you got a nice clean mobile surface. So for an existing outlet, where the concrete structure is, we're gonna put an 18 inch trench in there. The leading edge goes in. Uh, to the right of that, you'll see on the detail where we want a lip of concrete going there. So when the water first meets the mat, there's no way for water to get underneath it. And then at the very tail end, the last roll that you put down, we also wanna tra transition the bottom mat in as well. If you have a new outlet, very simple, just roll out the mat and set your new structure on top of it and keep on going down the channel. We have a guideline table. So depending on the pipe diameter, um, you know, you can see a, a 48 inch pipe. We're gonna go 16 foot wide. Our minimum length is 20 feet. If you wanna specify and, and do 60 feet, thank you, I appreciate that. Here's a job uh, here in Ankeny. Uh, geez, Bill, I think this was done probably six, seven years ago. Yeah, I believe so. Um, you can see quite a few, uh, you know, five outlets there uh, coming down. And by the time I got out there, um, it was starting to look pretty good. I just got to tell a funny story. If you look at the, the left of this slide, you'll see that there's no vegetation there. Uh, when I was out there, the homeowner came out and was asking me what I was doing. And I told her, and I was like, hey, what happened to that, that slope side of the mat? And she's like, well, we've got a neighbor about four, dollar, four doors down that wants us to maintain and mow this. And if we don't, then he calls the city every 30 minutes. So why not just throw some Roundup on there? Okay. Okay. So here's an outlet. You can see we've got our lip of concrete. They actually went above the structure with a little piece of it and then on down the, the slope with the rest of it. So once again, if they wanted this vegetated, no big deal. They can mow right over it. Here's one where you can see a ADS pipe, you know, nice tight fit underneath it. There's no way we're gonna get erosion or uh, any concerns of uh, anything washing out underneath that pipe. Uh, this is a DOT job down south. I like it. You've got an outlet at the top and then an inlet down at the bottom. The other thing I like is where the contractor kind of um, had tore away some of the grass and the vegetation that was there. He did a great job of putting a blanket in there so that we can protect that leading edge. Here, there's your, your 18 inch trench. And then there's, you can kind of see, there's a little bit of a concrete lip there. So here's the outlet, roll the mat over it, and then just take a concrete saw blade and cut it out. Plunge pool, man, we did this uh, probably five or six years ago. We do a lot with the city of Omaha. 
Um, you can see what it looked like as they were grading it out. Here they've got steel sheet piling down on the bottom there at that end. You can see that it's Fleximat Plus because of the amount of water that's going to come over it. I, I got these uh, pictures from uh, ASP because I had not started, so it was good for me to see where the mat started because when I got out there, um, all I saw that it would look like that and was underwater. So you can see they've got a few strips above the structure. Uh, the rest of it's going down. So there it is, looks really good coming in. So I've got a bunch of kind of before and afters. Now you can't even see the mat at all. So just different angles. There you can see when I first got out there. And then, you know, probably four or five months later, um, had a little bit of vegetation and then went out there probably another three or four months later and it was really looking good. That's what we like to see. It's fully vegetated. You can barely see the flex mat unless you walk right up on top of it. So that if there's ever a major flood and the top of the vegetation goes away, the root system and the stems are always protected by the flex mat. So there's the bottom end of it. And there it is coming in nicely. And then once again, as you probably already know, it's gonna be fully vegetated. Really nice job we have there. Slope design, we talked about trenching in the leading edge. You can see on the detail where the two and a half foot wide blanket goes at the seam. So here's a job years ago with ASP over in Gretna. Um, protecting the slope. Uh, you can see uh, normally we do a shingle effect like one mat after another in a channel, but as you can see, they, you can actually do it on a slope as well if need be, just so we don't get any water getting in at the seam. Hey, Ron, yeah. we had one Q&A come in about, it was, it was quite a bit earlier in your presentation, and he was asking if you ever use flex mat on a TRM, so he might have missed what the different options are for the backing material below the flex mat. If you could talk to him about, he asked specifically about using flex mat over a TRM on a slope. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So most of the time um, we're going to use a flex mat standard, just the Curl X2 on a slope because normally the sheet flow coming off of the top of the slope isn't that much. Um, I've had times maybe on like that, this photo right here where you've got the creek bed down at the bottom. Uh, you would use flex mat plus uh, a lot of the time the plus is just uh, used at the bottom of the channel or pretty much anywhere where you're going to get a lot of water flow going over it. Here's a job we did a couple years ago. That's the HOA president's home. Uh, that was a really steep slope. Uh, they ended up putting uh, steel sheet piling down at the bottom and then uh, I think by the time I got out there, we were starting to get some vegetation. You can see they put concrete down at the bottom to hold it in. Um, that's one of my projects uh, this year, Bill, is to get out there and get a nice drone shot of that all vegetated in. Oh, that'd be awesome. Here's a Nebraska DOT. So they didn't want to go all the way to the top of the slope. So if you want to start in the middle, feel free, trench it in. You can see they've got like a silk, silk sock kind of there at the leading edge uh, protecting it. And here's one uh, major emergency repair. Uh, you can see what was happening. The water was coming down, really knocking out the inlet. Uh, this job was interesting. Um, because we make so many different widths and lengths, the product being heavy, this guy, he only had equipment that could pick up so many pounds. So we did three eight by forties uh, so he could manage it. Uh, we also, you can see how we um, did some slope variation to where we could level it off. Uh, this is one of my only jobs that we put in um, the, what are those called, Bill? Ajax. Ajax, yep. So they put the Ajax in there to, as a kind of an energy dissipator. Uh, the only thing on this one I wish we would have done is put a mat uh, on a little bit wider. Um, I've actually been out on the job site when it rains and that uh, the Ajax actually forces the water out, not so much through it. Uh, they had one inlet in the beginning. They have three up there now. You can't see the third one because of the way I took the picture. Uh, they did a good job, you know, putting the concrete like splash pad there. So when it goes out, it hits that Ajax first. They got concrete uh, or coconut blanket on the sides. And then um, I think this is a video bill, but it's fine. 
So here's that uh, job I showed you earlier with the, the cross plates. There's the Ohio River. They had a lot to grade out. Um, this thing we did back a couple years ago in November. One thing I like to point out about this job is I went back to the engineer and said, you know, I'm not complaining that you use the Fleximat by any means, but why did you use the Fleximat? And he said, well, uh, you can thank the DNR. Uh, they wanted something that was hard armored, but also environmentally friendly. And um, deer can walk over Fleximat, but they can't walk over riprap. Shoreline, this is one of our details. Um, a lot of the ones that I deal with are a lot actually flatter than that. Um, you can see we're going sideways. Um, this one, they, they put in knowing that, you know, they're not even close to the, I mean, it's at the, the low water mark. It, that, when that thing fills up, it should uh, hit the mat right in about the middle of it. But like on this job where you see it, our recommendation normally is an eight foot wide mat, four foot in the bottom in the water and four foot above. Uh, if you're having any issues with muskrats, um, it really helps deter them from uh, trying to burrow in. This is probably one of my favorite jobs. Uh, Benson Park um, went out there, looked at it. You can see if you look down at the first tree, we actually went around the tree. So that's what it looked like kind of in the dormant. I went out, it was starting to come through. And then I went out, I think a year later, and I was just amazed. So that tree, they actually saved that tree before they put in the flex mat, the roots were exposed. All they did was put some dirt, put the flex mat over it. You can see it starts to vegetate in and then you go back a year later and man, I tell you, just un unbelievable job. So real quick, I took, uh, you can see on this photo what happens when you stop using the flex mat, what the shoreline looks like. And so I went from the other side to show you, you know, all that great vegetation on the Flexibat, but not so much where it's still continuing to erode away. Adams Park, this is another beauty. Um, they actually, uh, I mean, look at the before and after, you know, that was five, six years ago. That was probably, I think I took that last year. Um, just phenomenal. This was one where uh, they, uh, the engineer had asked if we could uh, cut the grid, which normally we um, would say no to, but you know, this water flow is pretty mild. So what they wanted to do is plant some plugs in there. And so they did, and there they are starting to spout up. And then that's what it looks like years later. It's just probably, I mean, when you think about an inch and a half gap between the block and you're getting that kind of vegetation, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Riverbanks, kind of the same theory behind a slope. Uh, what they did here is put some gabions on the bottom at the toe. So all you're going to do is run the mat down and then just tuck it in behind the gabion. Here's one where they uh, beveled in a couple of the leading edge blocks. They put an erosion control blanket up in there. Um, this job, they wanted to use cross plate anchors and also live stake willows. Uh, trees will grow through the product. On this one, you can see, if you look at some of the cross plate anchors, you'll see the legs are bent up. Um, the contractor can actually pull and keep pulling on that cable too much and uh, bend it up, and we don't want that to happen. And then there it is, vegetating in. Here's one, uh, people's backyard. You can see there's a big outlet down there. You know, all we're trying to do is protect their yard from washing away. Here's one where I know this is down in the southeast. They always like to line the leading edge with sod. At the bottom, I'm not a huge fan of rock, but I get it. Sometimes you got to put it down there to protect the toe. And then here you got the tree growing through the, the mat. Pond overflows. So this is a job that I hope to see very soon. Um, this is up in Ankeny. Um, I happen to be out there when they start, first started putting some of the rolls down, you can see between the two retention ponds, it's just an emergency spillway. And then, I, man, I, this is like two years ago. I, I've been by there uh, probably four months ago, and it looks a lot better than that. And here they did another area where they've got a, a couple outlet structures. Um, I can never say, what is that, Arbor Labor, or what's that road? Or a labor. Oral labor. I, I, I despise that name. <laughs> so, 
Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, okay, that's done with that. Here's one emergency spillway with the lake. They put uh, steel sheet pile in there, trench it in, put some concrete down. And then at the end of the mat, they also transition that down. Uh, this is another job with the DNR in Indiana where they wanted to, instead of grade seed mat and let the grass grow up through it, they wanted mat down and soil on soil, and, well, do a soil infill on top of the mat. And uh, there it is like a year later, looks great. I think, uh, Bill, they left that like eight by 30 section just as kind of a marker uh, so that they understand that below the, the, where the, you can see the flex mat, that's where all of it is at, just so they Interesting, know. interesting. So they don't like dig it up. Clear Creek Levee, this is about 150,000 square foot job. It's, uh, this levee is in between Omaha and uh, Lincoln. Did this with ASP, I don't know, probably seven, eight years ago. Uh, these are the only photos we could really get on the project because they, uh, they now it's fenced in and you can't really get in there to get a good look at it. Uh, DOTs. Let's see here. Okay. Missouri DOT, this is our first job with uh, MoDOT. This is uh, down by Jeff City. Um, I have yet to go buy this bill uh, because this was before I started, but I'd like to see what it looks like. Um, the picture on the right, uh, as you can see, it probably would have been best if they would have put some blanket up there. Uh, the water's pretty dirty just because of it. it's reeling out the soils above it. But um, I'll tell you what, if you can get vegetation like that in 45 days, I'll take it. Man, that's really going to slow the water down, and it just it looks a lot better than a bunch of rocks sitting down in the bottom of that channel. Here, there's a MoDOT. This is their maintenance crew. Uh, this is my shout out to uh, Todd Noble in Kansas City. Um, thankful he was there, uh, was out at the job. They they literally wanted to leave the channel looking just like that, and Todd's like, well. You may want to smooth it out and, you know, kind of shape it up, you know, because the Fluximat is not just going to go on a bunch of crumbly looking dirt. And because he was out there, it actually turned out to be a, a very nice job. Very nice vegetation growing in there. Here's one, uh, well, you can see how concrete does in channels. So this MoDOT job is... Uh, I-270 and Page, uh, Maryland Heights, west of St. Louis. Did this with the St. Louis guys. They actually left all that concrete in there. And then by the time I got out there, they were crushing the rest of it, which they actually left on site, uh, put dirt over it. And now you can see they're going down, uh, putting the mat in. And then here I went out uh, about a year later, you can see uh, they told me they put a 10 ounce non-woven in the bottom and Fluximat Plus on the side. Um, when I took this picture, there was no, it did not rain, so I don't know where the water's coming from. Um, but anyway, you can see I go out there, there's nothing growing in the bottom but on the sides. And I keep going out there and all of a sudden, you know, seven months later, I went out there and I thought I was on the wrong job. Just phenomenal growth in the bottom of that channel. And here's a picture I got from one of the business owners that um, I said, wow, that's a lot of water. And he's like, no, that was just about halfway through the storm. By the time the storm got done, the water was actually up on the parking lot. So that's just a real testament to the product. You've got eight to 10 foot of water going over the mat. And with that vegetation, it's locked in, it's going nowhere. Uh, you see this a lot with the curb cuts. They always like to run uh, riprap down the slopes. Um, I just think it looks better if you could use Fluximat and get uh, something that's going to vegetate in and give you a nice green look. Here's a MoDOT job. There's on I-63 again underneath the bridge. Uh, one of the main reasons they wanted to use Fluximat, you see that walking bike path? They did not want a uh, riprap underneath there with the chance of the rock falling off and hitting someone down on the path. Uh, that is the main reason why we got this job. Just safety. So just showing it vegetate in, landfills. Uh, we do a lot of letdown structures. You know, here, seeing it start to grow in. Here's a job that I did uh, on one a couple years ago. Um, you know, 
people ask, does the product fail? Well, it can. And like on this design, you can see the flex mat is going down the, the letdown, but then they ran a TRM to the side. And uh, hindsight's 2020. I, I wish they would have ran the flex mat off the side because now when that water hit the mat, all it did was um, cut a pretty bad reel down the side of the mat, as you can see in my drone photo. So I have, uh, I went back and gave recommendations to the landfill that um, were at levels off there. They really needed to put Fleximat in there to stop that from happening. Hey, Ron, I'm not looking at uh, counts on the slide number, but it's 120 and you're rolling great. You're doing great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm trying. No, you're so doing great. So here you can see, um, this is what they should have done. Uh, kind of put those fingers off with the Fleximat. Here we do boat ramps. A lot of DNRs. Um, here's a bolt ramp where the homeowner actually filled it in with fines to take away the bumpiness. Um, here's an access road. You know, we're doing more and more of these with these uh, wind farms. Um, so this does have the non-woven fabric underneath it because we do not want vegetation to grow through it. But what I want to point out on this one is if you look at the seams, that is not rebar anchors. Whenever you're doing a drivable surface or maybe a, a flat shoreline, um, we sell a 20 inch stainless steel zip tie that you can just zip the two mats together that way and it saves the job a lot of money. Access roads, uh, product can handle 70, 80,000 pounds driving over it. Here, a gravel infill where residential, they laid it down, filled it in with gravel. Uh, the next one is you'll see they did a, a soil infill, laid the mat down and just put soil and seed on top of it. I think this next one, this is my favorite soil uh, fill job. Down in Tampa, uh, they ended up putting flex mat on the side slopes and in the bottom. The contractor went out there and, and uh, blew uh, dirt in between the block. And then they came back and uh, ended up putting sod over it. And then um, I'm gonna tell you what, what a phenomenal looking job. I think my guy, my counterpart just took this picture to show everybody that he actually visited the cheesecake factory. Down in uh, Texas, we've got a manufacturing site, you know, these big wide channels, um, you just really need vegetation in there to slow the water down. Here's a Air Force base I did with ASP. They got a guy that lives over in Wichita. Uh, it was my first job with the Army Corps of Engineers. A lot of these jobs, the contractors never even used the product. Um, this guy put it in, did a great job with the install. Got it nice and tucked into the sides. They got concrete coming out from the structures where the leading edge is. Um, and I went back, I believe that was last year, and I was just, I, I could not believe the amount of growth we had in the bottom of that. Here's the other side of the road. It was a little bit smaller. There you can see. And then you, you, you're really in the next photo, you'll be, it's, you're really able to see where the Fleximat stops and then there's really not much vegetation after it. So we offer a, a project checklist. Um, we uh, decided to do this about seven years, seven, eight years ago. Uh, we realized a, a lot of the excavating companies have never heard of it, let alone installed it. Um, so we put this together. Uh, the, the big point is the third one down. If they just go to our website, Fleximat.com, check, click on the YouTube. They, we've got a lot more videos on there on how to install it. You know, three or four more points down, you know, do they have their seed and fertilizer? You know, this is a product, There's, it's not a do-over, right? It's not a straw blanket. You can't lay the mat down and be like, oh, darn it, I forgot the seed because you're not going to be able to get the, the mat back up. So it's always good. They got this checklist, make sure they've got their anchoring, their blanket if they've got, you know, two mats going side by side. Uh, and that's one of the places we add value just to chime in. I know we're about 124. Yep. Uh, we, we like to add value as your distributor is doing pre-con meetings with the contractors. And we even like to be on site making sure it's getting installed right. So Definitely. that's a place we can add value. Definitely. And then um, I always tell civil engineers, uh, if you're, you know, if it's not a private job and you're working on public stuff, um, I know it's uh, virtually impossible to use the word Fleximat. 
So this is our uh, generic term for the product, tied concrete block, mat, or equal. I see that spec in a, in a lot of different uh, jobs um, just because you have to have an equivalent uh, offered. CAD details, uh, if you go to our website, they're on there. Uh, every once in a while when I'm with the ASP or quick supply guys, um, I've got little zip drives that uh, you, they can hand out and it's got the CAD details on there as well. And then uh, Bill, ASP Quick Supply, thank you so much for uh, putting this on today and, and allowing me to speak to the, the group today on the product. Um, so thank you. You did awesome, Ron. And I got to tell you, the only mistakes that were made today were mine, not yours. And I <laughs> bragged early on about being good at Zoom, but I had you muted and I didn't realize it. And then I also, every time it wasn't working for you with the controls, it's because I was messing around and you're running my computer. And oh. it, as the host, it gives me override power. So I was oh, overriding no you. So I'm sorry. No, no worries. This is one of the things that um, in person people could see that uh, Ron and I have worked together a lot over the years. And I dig working with him because he's a consummate professional at getting done on time, but also filling, fitting more material into an hour than most people. He could do 200 slides in an hour. And for these webinars, I've been limiting our speakers to 70 slides. That's how much I trust you, Ron, and believe in you. <laughs> right. So, I'm gonna go ahead and click the next slide here and I'll, I'll read a question to you. But first I wanna say that on your screen, for those who joined late, it says Don Tiemann, but I'm not Don Tiemann, he's my boss. He couldn't be with us today, but I used his account to log in. Don is helping me, um, when this is done, he sends out a survey monkey and that asks you some questions. For those of you that already registered and got on this webinar, it'll feel redundant for the first three. We're gonna ask your name, your email address, and the city you're in. That's for us to know who we hand that to in our company to see that you participated and be ready to respond to you. The other two things are very important. We no longer require you to answer the five technical questions to get your PDH certificate. We just simply ask you, do you have a project you need help with right now? And even if you don't, do you have feedback for us? That's the, the fifth thing on, on the survey monkey. What feedback do you have on this webinar? Ron and I both like to learn from people and always get better but also what kind of things are you interested in? The Q&A that was used, we will answer those in writing. I answered some during, um, and then I also noticed Ron answered some through the presentation. When this is over, Ron and I are gonna both go through the written Q&As, I'll send those to him, and we'll type out answers for those. So when Don sends out your PDH certificate, even if you don't need the PDH certificate, open that email and look at that Q&A because it'll have the written questions and our written answers. Um, the other thing is the survey monkey. For those of you that did not ask a question in the Q&A, the survey monkey is a chance for you to ask questions and we will do a good job of following up with you. It'll be either me or somebody from ASP, Quick Supply or Bowman, or it'll be Ron himself. So thank you for joining us. It means a lot to us. We know your time's valuable. We've got another webinar next Wednesday, May 13th. That'll be a couple of our own in-house guys covering geotextiles. And then we got a couple more coming after that. So it's 128, Ron, there's one question I think I could go ahead and ask you. Okay. Uh, I, I took over control of the slides and the guy's asking, do you install the Gabion first when you have a com combination project with Gabions and Fleximat or do you install uh, the Fleximat first? Yes, sir. I, I think you could really probably do it either way. Um, I think that one that I had in the presentation, they had actually uh, put the Gabion down at the toe just because of the water flow and whatnot. And then it was probably just easier for them to uh, back in the, the flux mat behind the Gabion. Okay. And what I like about that question is it points to the importance of having you involved, your company and us. The sooner we get involved with a project, the more help we can be. Ron, I noticed you're really good at going out to projects and you can see things they did well, but you're also very good at seeing things they could have done differently or better. And you've been on jobs where you had to try to fix something during or after the fact, but wouldn't you agree the sooner they get us involved in the design and the layout up front, the more you can help them? Without a doubt. Yeah, that's awesome. And folks, I want you to know Ron is remote. He's not sitting in his office like he normally is. He's at a job site actually adding value and helping somebody. And he took time out of his day at a job site to go get in his truck and to be on here presenting for us. And Ron, you couldn't tell. If I wouldn't have told him just now, it sounds like you're in your office. So great job out of you. <laughs> right on. I appreciate you, man. Good job. So everybody, thank you with that. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. And Ron, thanks and uh, safe travels. And everybody be safe out there and be hope filled. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. All right. Bye-bye.